Good morning, everybody. I'm James of S&T Geotronics. Um, we're starting the second video in the series of programming the, where is it, where is it? The S&T Geotronics LLC Open D-Ski. Oh, there, I got it. Might even be right. Alrighty, for this exercise, today we're going to be using the first article. The very first one that we ever created. And we're going to be using our Arduino IDE, which I've already got up and running today. Oops, first we have to make some corrections. Yesterday I said that the Nano has 2K of RAM and 8K of ROM and that the original AGC computer had 8K of ROM and that there was 8K of program on GitHub. That's actually a mistake. Sorry. Sometimes I get ahead of myself, behind myself, beside myself. Ooh, beside myself. That's bad. And make little mistakes like that. And actually it's 32K of ROM. Just remember, 32K of ROM, 2K of RAM. Both the AGC computer and the Arduino Nano both are pretty much identical in that manner. Today, and also, oh, another mistake. I said we were going to play in this video with the um, Maxim shift registers and making the uh, seven segments light up. Well, there's a problem with that. Before we can really effectively do that, we need to be able to enter stuff on the keyboard. Hmm. Enter stuff on the keyboard. Wow. Who'd have thunk it? Anyhow, so we're going to work on reading the keyboard. And I'm sorry that I didn't have this ready already already. And I'm going to have to search around for a second and fiddle with stuff to do is this what I wanted oh yeah that's what I wanted so I'm gonna pull over a little schematic wiring diagram let me draw this schematic real quick okay and over we go Padunk. This is a schematic diagram of how the keyboard on the open disk is wired. And you'll see that we have rows of push buttons. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that we have a verb button, a noun button, and I don't know, I guess zero, one, and such as that, two, three, key release and reset button. They're all labeled on the schematic what they are. And we'll look at the schematic a little bit and we'll realize pretty quickly that on this side we have a wire coming in that's ground that goes to a series of 1K resistors that comes across and it gets to a 5 volt supply line. So we take this 5 volts and we divide it into 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven individual things and so it's five volts divided by seven and so here you get you get um, six sevenths of five volts and then here you get five sevenths of five volts and four sevenths of five volts and three sevenths of five volts and two sevenths of five volts and one seventh of five volts then the switch the push button switch that's the key actually connects the given voltage to an analog input pin up on the nano and it starts with analog 0 a0 a1 and a2 so this bottom row is connected to a2 the middle row is connected to a1 and the middle row is special because it divides the 5 volts by 8 so you have 7 eighths you know, six eighths, five eighths, four eighths, three eighths, two eighths, and one eighth of five volts. And anyways, so we're going to build a program that looks at these analog input pins on the Arduino, and then 
it's going to interpret them into a number between oh something like um, probably 0 and um, hmm, 1024 yep 1024 probably so anyways that's the schematic and that's basically how it works and we're going to dispense with that goodbye boop and then we're going to um, start coding well of course first things are first we're gonna have to have some variables in here there's a line already written for us that says void setup and has a, a bracket here and says put your code here you want to run once so basically the setup is just a, a place where on the way in when the program starts we're going to put the stuff we want to do when the program starts and the void loop down here is real important um, it's put your code here you want to run repeatedly so the void loop is really what you do the setup just kind of sets the machine up to run void loop anyways before we do that though we're going to want to declare a couple variables just a couple today later on we'll be doing way more variables so anyways let's talk about variables we'll grab my first variable I don't like to type because I type so slowly and so poorly and I'm just gonna come over here and paste me in a variable control V there he is and he's called bull of fresh bull is a boolean it's a neat variable um, it's the smallest variable that you can have in a computer and it says boolean of fresh equals zero there's only one other thing that a boolean of fresh could equal which is one because a boolean is just one bit just one single bit that we're taking up in our processor and anyway so we want to know whether a key press is fresh or not and so when we have a fresh key press the boolean of fresh will become a one and then when we go back and look and ask a question do we have a fresh key press we'll know and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a byte where are you a byte controls control v a byte of key val and there's two of them this is an array of two so there's a key val 0 and a key val 1 and they're a byte well a byte is the next biggest variable it's eight bits all stuck together and it can house a positive number between 0 well 0 is not really positive and um, 255 if we start at 1 and go to 256 but 255 is what it is alrighty so then we're going to go into our void setup now to understand and I'm gonna get rid of this control boop, gone to understand what this program really does is we're gonna take and we're gonna press a key on the keyboard and we're gonna to need to output that key to something so that we can see that it actually did something and we're gonna use one of the handiest things in the Arduino IDE which is a serial monitor the serial monitor we can send all sorts of stuff to the serial monitor and then we can view it right here on the screen so I'm gonna grab my serial begin command well no actually you know what I'm gonna type it just so that you can see how bad I am at typing dot begin V E G I N open parentheses 9600 close parentheses semicolon there we go in C you don't need line numbers well and I think you actually can put line numbers if you wanted to but most people don't so serial dot begin is a command it's part of the Arduino code that they built in it's built into the ID so we don't actually have to write the program to tell it how to do the serial it's already there we just call it and the 9600 was we tell it 9600 of course we could make that uh, add more qualifications to that and tell it how many stop bits and such as that but everybody's going to probably use one stop bit and the same thing most things do now so 
in this day and age we just tell the serial serial begin go at 9600 baud and all is well so now we're going to go down here and I'm going to ignore the void loop for a minute because I've got to go get our engine the nuts and bolts and the big thingamajig that gets the job done you know the bibbity bobbity boo so anyways we're gonna read the keyboard yay so I'm gonna go get a function so you don't have to watch me type it all in and we'll go back to some other old piece of dusty software somewhere like the Enigma machine or something and grab us a keyboard reader control C and come over here give us some lines and control V boom there's a keyboard reader this is a nifty little chunk of software and most uh, things in um, in Arduino or in C or whatever will say void for example here we have void setup setup doesn't return anything and void loop void loop is just a loop it doesn't return anything but here we have a little snippet of software that is named byte pull keyboard and what it does is it comes in here and it says the integer of value row 1 equals analog read of a0 now some people are shaking their head this isn't going to work because I haven't declared a pin mode for a0 and the truth of the matter is is that I don't have to rename a0 as input pin 1 I don't have to say that it's an analog input because basically unless we're going to reassign the pin as an analog output the Arduino already kind of knows that A0 is an analog input and it's already set up that way as an analog input and he's already expecting it to be an analog input and so I'm not really going to call him to be act as a digital pin so the Arduino really comes pre-set up to read A0 just analog read of A0 and basically what I'm doing is is that the value of row 1 equals which is an integer integer is a neat variable it can hold a value negative 32,768 32, to positive 32,767 it can't go as big positive as it can negative. I've never understand why they didn't give the extra one to the other side, but that's the way they did it. Anyways, an integer is actually like two bytes of information. So an integer takes up 16 bits in memory. And really, I could have done this with a byte. Could have done it with a byte on these because, well, no. These numbers are bigger than 255, so they have to be integers. Hmm. Anyways, so we're going to read our three analog inputs, and then we're going to do a if. We're going to ask a question. If the value of row 1 is greater than 930, and we're going to ask three questions. So there's an 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 right there, which attaches this um, question to this question to this question so all three of these have to be true and the value of row 2 is bigger than 930 and the value of row 3 is 930 well then there hasn't been a button pressed none of the buttons are pressed everybody is at 5 volts and we're going to return 20 the keyboard on the D-Ski has 19 buttons and 0 is actually represents a zero being pressed to make things simple because I'm not that smart of a guy there is no button 20 so if we return a 20 it's impossible which means that nothing actually happened and then we go on down here and we say well if we 
if this wasn't true, obviously there was a button pressed. And then we say else, if it's less than 255, return a 10. And then we come down here and start processing our analog one information. And if it's less than 200, you'll notice that the analog one has different values than the other two. That's because it's dividing in um, eighths instead of sevenths. So the values are slightly different because there's an odd number of keys. It just worked out that it had to be that way. Anyways, and we go all the way down through and we look at what's returned. Okay, and there's another line down here at the bottom that says else return 20. This line here is probably an appendix. It probably never will do anything. Um, it's just in case that for some foreseeable reason that's unforeseeable and most likely will never occur. And if it does occur, well, you know, I live in a world where things happen. Things do happen. So I add this line here that ensures that our machine doesn't get hung up and confused and stop. And it says, if all this other stuff is invalid and nothing else works, go ahead and return 20 and go on about your business and do what you were doing. Anyways, and so that's our little snippet of code that's actually going to read the keyboard. Now, we need to be able to tell it to read the keyboard, and we need to do a little tiny bit of processing, a little tiny bit of processing to determine, you know, whether it was a valid key press, whether the key bounced, whether something weird happened, stuff like that, because weird stuff happens. Anyway, so I'm going to make another little snippet of software to make sure that we debounce our keyboard just right to where our keyboard doesn't bounce around and act fool. So we're going to grab this one from that piece of stuff and we're going to come in here and we're going to control V paste that in there. And this one here is called byte read keyboard. This one here pulls the keyboard. It actually pulls the keyboard reads the, the inputs, interprets what the inputs mean, and it sends it. So, byte read keyboard is a byte. It returns a byte, which is the keyboard value that it gets from this program down here. And let's look at this. We say keyval0, which is one of these variables that we made up here, byte keyval2. So, there's 0 and 1. Byte keyval0 equals pull of keyboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to take key value of zero and we're going to make it equal to what this little snippet of code down here returns. And you can see it returns all these different things. It can return, if it returns 10, the verb button was pressed. If it returns 12, the plus button was pressed. If it returns 18, someone pressed clear. And all the way down to the bottom, which is 17, and reset, and all the numbers too. So it's going to return a number between 0 and 19. If we return 20, nothing happened. So we look at this next line. We ask a question. If key value of 0 now equals 20, and it's equals equals, which is it equals, if we do it with just one equals, then we're taking this value and making it equal to that value. If we use two equalses in this Arduino C program language, two equals is asking a question. If key value of zero is equals equals, really equals 20, and then we're going to say key value of one equals key value of zero. So we're going to make them the same and that nothing happens, so fresh equals zero, and we're going to return 20 because nothing happened. And then we're going to come down to this next line, and once we've returned 20, made fresh equal to zero, fresh means there's no valid key press, and returning 20 means nothing happened, and we just come in, we pull the keyboard, we realize that nothing has happened, and we make sure that nothing has happened and then we 
come back here and we say fresh is zero because nothing happened and we return 20 because nothing happened and once we get to return we fall out of this piece of software and we go back where we came from and then we're but if that's not true we're going to say if key value zero equals equals key value of one and fresh equals equals zero return 20. Now what this does is this says okay later on down here key value of one is going to hold what was last pressed so if key value of zero if I'm down here and my finger is on the verb button and I'm returning a 10 and returning a 10 and returning a 10 and returning a 10 obviously this here may not be true or may be true rather it may be true because the old values of 10 the new values of 10 so we blow through this and then we look at this line and we say okay is our new value equal to our old value yep we've been here before so then fresh becomes zero and we return 20 all right but if the new incoming value is different than the old value we're going to do something else and here's the else and we're going to say key value of one equals key value of two so now they're the same because we we know we have a valid key press so we're going to make them the same the old value becomes the new value and then we're going to delay 10 microseconds not very long not even hardly noticeable to you and me and then we're going to go pull that darn keyboard again we're going to make key value of zero equals to the pull of keyboard the reason we're doing this is to make sure that we don't have a bouncy chattery button this little delay in here and checking it twice making a list and checking it twice all that sort of stuff is pretty cool so we're going to check our keyboard again and then we're going to come back and say if key value of zero equals key value of one by golly and we we that we've got a valid button press we checked it twice we're good we have a valid button then we're going to say fresh is equal to one because by golly we got a live one now and we're going to return the key value of zero which we just read and if this isn't true in other words we thought we had a positive result for a keyboard and then we checked again and nah the key isn't being pressed then we're going to say else, which is a nor else. This is an if or else. If this isn't that way, then by golly, we're going to do this. We're going to say key value of 0 equals 20. Key value of 1 equals 20. We're going to reset it to 20. And we're going to return 20. And then these here brackets close. This one closes this else right here. And these here all close each other. There's a little at the end of the question. You can see there, else, that closes that else. And this is an if, and it's closed right here in the same line. Some people don't actually write the if in the same line. They'll move down a line, but that's just a little bitty if. And so we're going to leave it in the same line. Anyways, and this one here, this bracket here, closes our whole byte of read keyboard. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. Some people say I'm a sloppy coder and don't know what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. And they may be right because I'm not actually the greatest coder on earth. Thank God, because I've seen some of the greatest coders on earth um, work and some of it is quite hard to follow. Anyways, so now we've ignored this little void loop guy right here enough. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get rid of put your main code in here you want to run repeatedly yeah and we're going to say control x bye now i'm going to come over here and think about this for a minute and so we're going to come in here and we're going to say something crafty like bite bite of hmm bite of read keyboard yep ah oh, heck let's just do it this way Let's just grab one that's already typed out in another piece of code. Boop. Byte of read keyboard. Control C. And we'll stick it over here. Control V. Byte of read keyboard. Byte of key equals read of keyboard. So we come in here. We say byte of key. And the byte is 8 bits of data. 
is going to equal read of keyboard. Read of keyboard is a function that returns a byte. So it's all going to fit and work out. And byte read keyboard is going to go down here. And he says, well, I need to know what the keyboard says. He's going to go down here to pull the keyboard. He's actually going to pull the keyboard and see if there's something that's changed. And then he's going to evaluate it. And he's going to return the results. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to ask ourselves before we do anything with this data that was just returned to us in the form of byte key. And we're going to question that by this question here. We're going to say if fresh equals 1, because by golly we want to be certain that we have fresh information because we're certainly not going to act on stale information. So if fresh equals 0, which is handled down here in a line or two, it says there's a line in here somewhere and, and that says that if this and that and the other, then fresh equals 0. It's not fresh. So we want to make sure that we got fresh on this line here where we're returning the actual key val. That little line right there, if key value 0, blah, 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 fresh will equal 1. And so then we come up here, we answer this question, yep, fresh equals 1. And then we have an AND key value is not equal to 20. Because for some ungodly reason, we could have a fresh 20 returned, which would make no sense at all. Because if it's 20, nothing happened. All righty. So then if it's a fresh key stroke and it surely doesn't equal 20, by golly, then we're going to serial print lin the key. And print lin just means print line. And we're going to print the value of key to our serial monitor. Pretty cool. And we don't want this thing running completely away. So we're going to give it a little tiny delay. D-E-L-A-Y of, say, 50. Like that. And a semicolon. All righty. So now we've written this neat little snippet of code. We have some variables that are declared. We discussed variables. There's other variables out there. There's uh, what they call an unsigned integer. And the beauty of an unsigned integer is, is that an integer, where's an integer? There's an integer. These integer guys are good for variables of minus 32,668 to positive 32,000. 767. They can hold one more on the negative side than they can on the positive side because of the way that it signs the integer with the most significant bit. We'll get into that later on. And then there's an unsigned integer that can hold a number between 0 and 65,535. And then we run into things like longs that can hold um, numbers like 2,147,000,000. 483,648 negative to that same number of positive minus 1. And then, of course, we have an unsigned long that can hold stuff up to 4,294,967,295. Basically, that's a hard number to say, so let's just say that it's 2 to the 32nd power minus 1 to make things simple. There. That's much easier than saying billions and jillions and gazillions. Anyways. So, there's our little software, and we are going to come over here and press this button here that says verify. This is the scary part. Knowing me, knowing that I'm tickety, knowing that I don't type so well, I'm getting old, kind of blind, and, well, I'm not going to admit to the other thing. Not openly. Anyways, so we're going to press the compile button, and it says that it's saving, really. Sure, buddy, save it. And now it compiles. Oh, and it says we have an error. Key was not declared... Oh, where is this? If fresh... Oh. Well, duh. Boop, 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 boop. 
put something the wrong way. So control X, goodbye. See there, I make mistakes. Control V, put that in the right place. And let's check this again, see if it compiles. Oh, much better. See, I make stupid mistakes. I said I wasn't going to make any more mistakes. I had to correct the, what I said last video, and still I make mistakes. Oh, what a mess. All right, so we have a code that compiles now. There he is. He compiles. We're going to grab the ST Geotronics Open Disky first article, the very first one ever. Well, actually, not really. There's a breadboard running around here that has one on it, but this is the first one that was ever stuck all together. And I'm going to plug in to the Arduino in the top of it. The little Arduino's in there, stuck in there. And I am going to come over here and go Tools. And the board is already set to Nano. We talked about the different boards the other day. And we're going to check our port is USB 0 because I'm running Linux. And Linux says nanos are USB 0. Yay! Maybe one day I'll flog my Windows machine. Where is he? Oh, there he is. And we'll do this in Windows. Oh, very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. And then we are going to press the button and upload it to the Arduino Nano. Boop, there it is. And then we're going to do something scary. We're going to open the serial monitor. There is our serial monitor. Wow, he's big. Let's make him a reasonable size. Where we can see. We have a serial monitor. Of course, nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Oh, no. Why is nothing happening? Hmm. Nothing's happening. Wow. All right. So... Let's see, and we'll press the V, and let's see, let's move this just a little bit. I'm so disjointed. Oh, that's bad. Very bad. Very, very bad. All righty. So now we can see that we have a verb. And when we press the verb button, we should return 10 to our serial monitor. So I'm going to press verb. And look at there. Every time I press verb, every time I press it, we return a 10. And we'll press the plus button, and we get a 12, just like it says right there in the code. And a minus button returns 13 and a zero. Look at there, a zero returns zero. A one returns one. A two returns two. Um, three returns three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And clear returns 18. Yep, just like it should. And if I hold the button down, see the, the code in there works. As I hold the button down, he realizes it's stale. And he returns 20, and nothing happens until I release the button, and then it becomes 20, and then fresh becomes zero, and then we press a new button, and he takes the new information. So, and none of these buttons bounce or anything. It gets it right every single time because it's checking it twice. Going to find out if it's fake or not. Yep. Anyways, so now we can read the keyboard. And uh, I guess that's a good enough little snippet for today on programming the ST Geotronics LLC open Disky. We're completely open. We have no secrets from anybody, really. And um, anyways, that's the way things need to be. Everything's better when it's open because lots of people help us. And we got um, David in Florida that is uh, helping us work on code. And we welcome him to the, the, the team, and we wish him luck, and I'm really anxious to see what he's doing. Someone said he was working on demounting the keyboard, uh, which means I probably shouldn't have done it myself. But anyways, everybody needs to know how it works. And so we did this, and his little snippet of code may be 
slightly different than this one, or maybe completely entirely different, maybe case driven and, and highfalutin and really nice, versus my clunky little bunch of else if sort of weird quirky statements that seem to work just fine. But, you know, that's the beautiful thing about coding is, is that you don't necessarily have to do everything the same way. And I'm sure there's lots of you out there that are shaking your head and then that guy's a nut. And you might be right, might be, might not be. Never know. But we proved that it works and it works. And we'll just save this little sketch here. And we'll come back later and we'll grab it. And the next video, maybe we'll get on to doing the maxim. Um, if you don't have an Arduino ID yet, you need to refer to the first video and go over to Arduino's website at Arduino CC, grab you an IDE, and get you the start getting your libraries. We're going to have to go find next time a, a Maxim library, and I've got to do a little thing to remember where I got that from so I can show you where I got it from. Anyways, this here is James. KM4YWT, wishing everybody out there a 73, and a good day for those that don't know what that means, and um, I guess I'll be going clear, and y'all have a good one. Thank you for joining me, and I'll catch y'all later.